Hey, good to see you. This is On the Clock Instant Reaction brought to you by P.J. Wheelahan. The Eagles have their second selection of the 2021 draft. We're here to break it down. Danny Pommels, Barrett Brooks, and Ray Dittinger. And gentlemen, uh, a little bit of surprise here as the Eagles, uh, you know, in your estimation, just from our talking before we came live here, pick the second best available center and pass on the first available one. Landon Dickerson is the selection at number 37, a center from Alabama. Ray, I want to come your way first because your reaction once you heard the pick was pretty visceral. Uh, what 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 is your reaction to the selection? Well, I was surprised for a couple different reasons, Dan. Um, I mean, I think we're all in agreement that this team still needs help on defense, um, and particularly the defensive secondary. Uh, and I thought this was a great opportunity to go get a defensive back. You know, I'll put out the name Asante Samuel Jr. just for one. Um, and I really thought. I wasn't even thinking. I wasn't even thinking about an offensive player right here, to be honest with you. I thought they were going to go get the secondary player. Um, so this surprises me. Um, you know, Landon Dickerson is a, um, he's, he's a massive guy. I mean, he's six feet six, he's 325 pounds, uh, and was a good player at Alabama. I'm not going to say he wasn't, but boy, he has a long history of injuries. Uh, and it happened again this year, national championship game. He tore up his knee in the national championship game and it took him off the field on a cart. It's like the third time it's happened in his career down at Alabama. Uh, he has a long medical, uh, and it just surprises me. I knew somebody would draft him. I frankly didn't think he'd get drafted this high. Uh, and I didn't think he could draft it by the Eagles. Um, the Eagles are obviously thinking in terms of Jason Kelsey is going to play this year, but they're aware that he's closer to the end of his career than the beginning. I understand that. Uh, you wanted to go get a, a, a good player for that spot because Kelsey has been so good there for so long. Um, and when this guy has played, I mean, he's played well, but the medical history, Dan, really does concern me. Barrett, this is your kitchen, man. You were a second round pick as an offensive lineman in here and six foot five. So here is this guy coming in, uh, Landon Dickerson, with the similar attributes. Um, you, you were caught off guard a bit by this selection, too, a bit puzzled by it. Yeah, um, because I, I really feel as though Creed Humphreys was probably the best center uh, that I looked at this year. You know, um, you know, he he's he's everything you want. He fills all the boxes as far as a leader. A guy that's going to go out there and almost play like a sumo wrestler and fight. But, you know, I'm going to say this. He's still a good player. But, you know, just like Ray said, I think his ability to stay on the field is going to be in question a lot of the time. I mean, for the last couple of years, you know, he's been on IR. And, and I mean, they don't call it IR, but he's, you know, he's been out the game with season ending of injuries. I like him. I like what he does. You know, to be so big, he's kind of fluid in his movement. Um, he can run block. He releases his hips at the point of attack. He can drive block. You know, a lot of things that when he's on the field, he does very, very, very well. On the field, he's a leader in the middle of that offensive line. You know, other guys in the huddle look to him for inspiration as far as getting, you know, things going on the offensive side of the ball. If things aren't happening right. They do look for him for that, um, for that leadership. I think this is more of a Jeff Stoutland pick, the offensive line coach for the Eagles, as opposed to, you know, getting the best, you know, position center available. Um, I mean, you, you could have done better. I think so. But I think the comfortability of being around Stoutland and understanding, you know, he has a connection with Alabama. And, uh, you know, I mean, look at it, you know, <laughs> that's where it's rocking right now, you know. Alabama center, Alabama, you know, a former Alabama a quarterback, Alabama number one wide receiver. Maybe they're starting to see something with drafting in the SEC, especially at a national championship team. I mean, it's not bad to go out there and get and pick from the best, you know, team in the country as far as college football. But I think they could have been done better with, you know, with, with Creed uh, Humphreys and his ability to play center. He's the same guy but he's a little more healthier. Same guy. He's just not as massive as he is, but he can go out there and, and, and definitely go play physical. He's going to block you at every level. If he can I mean, if he can go out there and get a safety, he's going to hit a safety too. But this is a good pick. I could have, I thought they could have done a lot better at getting another guy. But, hey, you know, they got a quality guy. When on the field, he's a tough player. You know, a very, very tough player. 
But, you know, the best ability is availability. He has to be available to be out there and play. And plus, you know, I really thought that, um, you know, center surprised me that they went and got a center on the offensive line. When, you know, like Ray said, there's so many defensive holes that we need to, to fix right now. I think cornerback, right, it was above beyond the, the point of emphasis as far as, you know, going out there and filling holes. I mean, at this point, all we have is a guy that's 30-something years old playing out on the outside. You know, he's the only one that consistently goes out there and plays and big play slay. He needs somebody opposite of him to handle these receivers in this division. There's three good receivers in, 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 down in, in, uh, in, in Dallas right now. The Washington football team has two good receivers. Now you look at the Giants. They got three good receivers too. We're going to need guys to cover these guys. I was cool with bringing Sayamalu in and he being an heir apparent to Jason Kelsey. I guess they saw past that, and they're going to keep Sam Milo at the guard position and put this kid in. But, you know, I, this kind of threw me for a loop. Ray, you had something to add? Well, no, I, I pretty much agree with just about everything that Barrett just said. Um, Humphrey, to me, was – he was the best center I saw this year, I, I thought. Um, and it's remarkable. Um, he's – Got tremendous power. Uh, and anybody that saw the Oklahoma team this year, uh, he was able to do things at the center position in terms of controlling guys on his nose, uh, being able to block for the run, being able to get outside and do some of the Kelsey type things to get out and lead plays on the edge, get to the second level. Um, he looked to me like he had a pretty complete set of skills. Uh, and if you were looking at centers, that's kind of where I was looking. Again, you know, uh, Dickerson is uh, is a guy that has he's played well, but you really can't look past the injury factor. I mean, it's 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 very real with him, uh, and, and including just coming off one in the last game that he played, the national championship game. So, yeah, you know, the team has got, I mean, they have a very serious Alabama thing going. There's no question about that. Uh, and, look, it, it, there, there's a lot to be said for that. You know, I know that when, you know, when Chuck Knoll, and this is going back a ways, but when Chuck Knoll began to rebuild the Pittsburgh Steelers, a team that had never won, ever, nothing. Uh, when he came in and began rebuilding that team, one of the priorities he had when they went into the draft was he said, we're going to draft players from winning programs because this team has never won. They don't know how to win. And we're going to bring guys in from college programs where they did nothing but win. That's how we're going to change the culture of this team by bringing in guys who have won their whole careers. We're going to build a locker room and a team full of guys like that. Pretty good philosophy, and it worked in, in for the Steelers, obviously, because they put together a team that dominated the NFL for a decade. But it really started with the idea that we're drafting players from winning programs. There's a lot to that, uh, and I think the Eagles, and you're seeing it being applied here. Hertz has obviously started his career at Alabama. Smith, you know, Devontae Smith, Alabama. Dickerson, Alabama, uh, and Jeff Stoutland, clearly the offensive line coach, had an enormous influence in this selection. So, listen, if this kid can come in and stay healthy, he is a good player. But at this point in the draft, I'm a little surprised they're drafting at this position and not addressing their defense because, obviously, they still have a lot of work to do on that defense. The obvious elephant in the room is the future of Jason Kelsey and how long he maintains the position as the Eagles starting center, considering uh, bringing Landon Dickerson in. I mean, hey, last season, Carson Wentz was the starting QB. They drafted the quarterback in the second round. All of a sudden, Carson's gone a year later and Jalen Hurts is the starter. So there is a little bit of precedent there. Um, do you guys feel like this is suddenly, uh, suddenly Jason Kelsey playing, uh, excuse me, Landon Dickerson playing apprentice to Jason Kelsey to, you know, be there in his stead when, when Kelsey hangs him up, maybe soon, maybe after this season, Barrett. You know, I really thought that uh, Sam Mahler was going to be the heir apparent to moving in the center. Um, you know, I guess they like him more so with the guard position, the left guard position. They got some stability there. But, yeah, I mean, you know, this this is really shocking. You know, we went out and got, you know, Landon. Um, like I said, Landon's a good player. And like I said, the biggest thing is, is – the biggest ability that'll be over his head is availability. He has to be out there. He has to stay consistently on the field and stay healthy. That'll be the only way, you know, that, uh, you know, this kid could, you know, not be in the lineup is if he's not healthy. I mean, he, he checks all the marks as far as being a good um, NFL center. He can move fluently. You know, his ladder, he's, he's challenged laterally as far as lateral movement. But, hey, when you play center, you don't have to worry about that too much. You got a guard on each side of you. 
Uh, you talk about a guy that's going to go out there and be that leader in the locker room, a leader in the huddle. He's that guy. You know, he, he understands what his purpose is. His purpose is to be in the middle of that of, of that of that offense. He starts to play. He's the guy that you know gets things going. His balls being snapped is when everything gets going. You know, see, he takes that 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 you know, responsibility very seriously. Um, you know, he he knows how to make the calls. You know, he gets to the mic, finds the mic, and then the protection goes after that. Or on run plays, you know, he knows what a double team is, not to use those double team blocks. But at the end of the day, he has to stay healthy and on the field. I mean, six foot six, three hundred thirty pounds, and can move the way he does. He's a, he's a mountain to move and, and, and get around, but he just has to stay on the field. He can even move out in space, get to the second level, but he needs to stay on the field. And that's the biggest thing. You know, you can't make the club in the tub. He has to take that seriously and make sure he gets his body in a position where he can stay out there consistently if he's called upon. And, and Kelsey, you know, you know, we saw Kelsey. Kelsey was held together with, you know, bubble gum and duct tape. You know, it was a lot of times I didn't think he was going to be on the field. I mean, when he hyperextended his elbow, his snapping elbow in the game and still came back. I mean, this, this guy's bionic. You know, I don't know where they make guys like him anymore, you know, especially him being a smaller guy. But he stayed on the field, showed that he's a baller. If this kid learns from him and gets, you know, some of the toolage that uh, Kelsey can give him, he could be a good player. But the one thing I want him to really, really understand is stay on the field. Hey, Ray, for all intents and purposes, we're talking about Jason Kelsey, an all-time Eagle. Um, are, are you feeling like this could be the writing on the wall that his swan song is imminent? Uh, well, imminent in the sense that it could be this year. Right. I mean, this could very well be his last season. They weren't even sure that he was going to come back to play this season. Right. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's if it's not this year, it's probably next year. I mean, it's he's coming to the end of the line. and. He's not going to, when the time comes, whether it's this year or next year, he's not going to be an easy guy to replace. I mean, he is next to Ben Narek, who's an all-time, all-time great player, probably the greatest player in the history of the franchise. Jason Kelsey is probably the best center this team's ever had, which is a pretty amazing thing to say about a guy that was a sixth-round draft choice. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's been that good, and he's been that durable. Uh, and he's been to a couple Pro Bowls already and probably could have been to a couple more. So – you don't want to replace him with just a guy. I mean, they wanted to probably go get another player who had the ability to be a pro bowl player. Um, and, you know, this guy has, he, I mean, he has a pedigree. He played at Alabama and was a real good player. Um, but I am concerned. We've talked about it a lot is the injury history, uh, which you can't really overlook. And the other part of it is, <sighs> Man, there are, there are a lot of good defensive players still on the board right now. Good defenders, a couple good corners. Again, I'll mention Asante Samuel Jr. I really thought when Asante didn't go right here at the top of this draft and he was still on the board, I was in my own mind thinking, I'll bet it's going to be Asante Samuel Jr. Absolutely. Uh, because, uh, yeah, I think he, I mean, he would have come right in and played this year at that other corner. I think he's, he's a little small. I mean, I wish he were a little bit bigger. Uh, but he has a lot of his father's instincts, a lot of his father's quickness. Uh, and I think he's going to be a guy that's going to start in this league this year right away. Um, and that right now is still, you know, there's a vacancy sign right there as far as the other, that other cornerback position opposite Slay. I thought they could have answered it there. There are a couple of good pass rushers that are still on the board. And there's a couple of good safeties that are still on the board. So I really thought this pick was going to go defense. So that's why this one took me a little bit by surprise. Um, I, it sort of speaks to the idea that I guess the Eagles believe, and they got a lot of picks. We know that. They got a lot of picks coming up. And they feel like, and we said this last night, there is good depth at the cornerback position. They're going to a lot of pretty good corners. We're seeing some of them start to go now. But they're good corners, and maybe you can get one the next round, the next round. And maybe you can. But I thought that this was a spot where you could have gone and gotten one right now and, been, and had that area sealed up and then worried about your center a little bit later. So this pick, I have to say, this pick sort of took me by surprise. Remember, they traded the 84th overall selection to the Dallas Cowboys in order to move up to 10 to draft Devontae Smith. So that's one less pick the Eagles have uh, this season. Uh, Barrett, um, you, when we spoke before we went live, you thought DB was the way that the Eagles will go as well, echoing Ray's sentiments. And Howie Roseman was really lauded for 
the way he maneuvered the draft and read the board last night and was able to bring Devontae Smith here to Philadelphia, do you feel like he might deserve a little bit of criticism for this move, or do you see it as more of a glass half full situation? Um, I will say this, you know, we 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 know as a, as a you know as people that watch the game. Me and Ray, we watch the game. Uh, we're very familiar with the, a lot of these players that are in this draft, and you know we also know what the Eagles have, you know, inside the locker room right now, and. I just didn't think center is the right move right now, considering the fact that we have somebody that could be an Aaron parent for him right now with NFL experience and that knows the system uh, in, in, in Sayamalu. Sayamalu can be a great center also when called upon. So I didn't so think So are, are we maybe considering he might play another position? Is that a possibility? He can play guard. I mean, he has the size of a guard, but I mean, he's played center in Alabama, you know, so... You know, I think that's going to be his natural position. And at this point, he can learn from one of the best in, in, you know, in the league. But, you know, at the end of the day, we know the needs of the Eagles. And I, we, we also know that, you know, cornerback just is something that they need in the worst way. You know, unless they're going to go out in the free agency, they needed a cornerback now, high in the draft. If not number one, at least number two. And that would be my next question. Yeah. Would you feel like that, that would be a need they could serve on the open market? So I think that's what they're going to have to do because they need somebody to come in. And like I said, with the weapons that just entered into, you know, you know, this division, you know, it is, they need some, some guys that can go out there and not just cover a number two receiver because of Slay has the number one receiver, but they need somebody that can cover number one. Cause there's two number ones uh, in Dallas right now. There's two number one receivers in Dallas. There's two number one receivers with the giants. There's two number ones with the Washington football team. Samuels is now there. You know, you, you go up, you know, I-95. These guys aren't playing with us right now. They need to, to go out and have somebody that can cover. I'm tired on third down that I have to sit there and get, you know, uh, <laughs> butterflies in my stomach because of third down. I'm, I'm, I'm worried about them not being able to cover, you know, these big-time receivers. And that's not me just, you know, you know, giving these guys, you know, a lot of praise, but they deserve it. You know, they they're – Lamb – it's good, very, very good. You know, you got, you know, Amari Cooper. He's there. He's good. You go up to 95, you know, what they have. You know, Sterling Shepard being the slot, he's not even their number one wide receiver now. They went out and got them, you know, the, the, the kid from, um, from, from Detroit. So they have some speed there also with Ross coming from Cincinnati. We need people that can cover these athletes. And at this point, we don't have enough in our barn to field, you know, a, a good enough defense to stop these teams. Ray, I'll give you the final say here before we wrap things up. Uh, do you feel like they can balance out this selection, which was maybe a, a bit of a reach in uh, some estimation, with the other picks that they make in the draft to kind of bolster the defense that way? Oh, sure. Uh, I, I think, well, obviously that's, that's what they're going to have to do because they still do have needs in the defensive side that have to be addressed. They just have to be. Uh, and they do have a lot of picks, so they can go there. And uh, the salary cap is tight, so the free agency market won't yeah, be as bountiful yeah. as maybe in the years past. I mean, they can, and I'm sure that in, internally that's what they're discussing. But, um, boy, to me, this, this, this was the spot to do it. I mean, there were, some, there were some really good – I mean, I have five – I'm sorry, four defensive players on my board that were available to start tonight that I had as first-round picks – Last night, I mean, is Barmore players, Barmore one of those people? Yeah, uh, that, that's that I had. That I thought we were going to be first round picks last night. They were still on the board to start today. Defensive players who I thought could have come in and helped this team right now. Um, you know, Dickerson. I mean, you addressed the point, uh, Dan, about could he play another position? Uh, he has. Uh, he played some right guard uh, for this team, uh, and the, the size is not a problem. I mean, the guy is six feet six. In fact, he, he almost looks too big to be a center. Yep. Mm -hmm. But he finished his career as a center, uh, and he was very good there. Uh, when he's played, he's played well. He's a very powerful guy who moves that large frame really well. But the injury factor, to me, is a major concern. I kind of think this is a little high to be drafting him. Uh, as I said, if I had been with the Eagles, I would have gone to the defensive side right here because there are some players right now that I think could have stepped right in and played immediately. Dickerson, even if he comes in and he's healthy, isn't going to beat out Jason Kelsey this year anyway. 
So I would have gone and tried to get myself a defensive player that I thought could have lined up and played from day one this season. That's what picks one through three are. Picks one through three have to come in and contribute. They have to play. And I don't think first, second, or third round at this point, first rounder, he'll, he'll go out there and play second round. He's going to sit a little while. Well, hopefully the Eagles provide more answers than questions because uh, we're hoping to hear from them after the drafting is done here in rounds two and three. Uh, may maybe they will speak. They spoke last night, but we will only place we can get answers to these questions is from the Birds front office. And I uh, keep it locked on NBC Sports Philadelphia.com and the My Team app for all of the latest details of the Eagles 2021 draft for Ray Dittinger and Barrett. Reaction brought to you by PJ Willingham.